it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you our monthly hop called Hashtag Let Us Start With Art, which is all about making art that you hang on the walls. So this is the August uh, edition of Let Us Start With Art. Make sure that you go below the video and hop through all the other videos. Give them all some love. When you come back to me, you will have completed the hop. So this one has been going on since January and we're doing it every month. Today I decided to do some more cactus art because I have been obsessed with doing desert and cactus themes since I returned from my trip. I went out, I saw a lot of other things, hills and trees and forest fires and all kinds of stuff while I was out. And now I'm back to my own garden and my own plants and my own uh, flora and fauna and I'm happy about that. So I decided this morning when I was outside watering my little potted tomatoes and uh, filling my hummingbird feeders I saw a cactus wren and I believe that is the the Arizona state bird. It's a common bird here but I mostly see morning doves and things like that in my backyard. I don't see the wrens as often. So he was sitting on a prickly pear cactus and I thought that would be a fun thing to draw. So I was sketching him and then I decided, or it could be a her actually, I'm not, I'm not sure how to identify uh, whether it's a boy or a girl wren. I don't really know. Um, sometimes there's a big difference because maybe one will be a lot more colorful or patterned than the other, but I'm just really not sure. So I had a little basic sketch of the shape that um, I thought I might use. And then I decided to go ahead and make a whole piece, uh, a mixed media collage, which is what I love to do. And I decided to go with the color palette of, you know, dusty greens oranges, rust colors, uh, turquoisey blues. Um, that, that's a common color palette collection for me because of where I live. It's very, it's very what I see. You know, I have, I have rusty red orange mountains across from me and I've got a lot of cactuses that are not super bright green, but more kind of a dusty green. And, um, you know, it's just, these are just colors that I like. I picked out some different papers. Uh, the first one I picked is one from my new uh, stencil collection from Stencil Girl. I have three desert cactus themed stencils that came out on the 21st. And I made a bunch of papers with them using the gel plate with, with uh, pan pastels, with uh, alcohol inks, things like that. And some of them, the papers are really cool, but you can't really tell what they are. They're just more like pattern. So I picked one of those that had the right colors, those uh, dusty greens and colors like that. And I tore a strip off of that. I also have some tea bag paper that's, you know, already been stained with tea. It's a thin paper that I like to use. It kind of blends everything together. I have a magazine page, actually two different magazine pages. One of them has a close-up picture of sand that, you know, gives you that golden rust and brown and, and orange colors. And also one that was, I don't, it has interesting pattern on it. I think it's a building, maybe a, maybe a building that's fallen down or a building that's being built. But it was the same type of colors and it has this interesting um, kind of linear, linear pattern on it. So I, I tore a strip of that. I also have some, uh, some deli paper that has different like cleanup from a, from a stencil. Uh, I think it's a playing piece. Uh, there's a set of stencils that came from Stencil Club, from Stencil Girl, that have these... Uh, playing pieces and game board type uh, theme on it and I think it's one of those but it was it was when I was just cleaning off paint from the stencils so it had the right colors what I'm looking for is color I'm not so concerned with the pattern because this is a very random background collage for my piece I just I want to mix in the colors and interesting pattern together but not so concerned about what is 
is on the paper. You know what I mean? So you can see that's some playing pieces, some type of playing pieces. I wanted just a little bit of that turquoise here and there. Uh, a lot of the, the green and the brown and the orange. So I'm. this is a hmm, probably a six by eight wrapped canvas piece. Um, you saw me open it at the beginning, so you know what it is. Maybe it's five by seven. I don't know. Anyway, it's a canvas that you can hang up on the wall by just simply putting a, p a push pin and hanging it right up there, which means that I want to make sure that the collage and the and everything goes all the way around the edges of the canvas. So I made sure everything was covered. I applied all of that paper with matte medium, uh, kind of a, a loose gel format from a Deco Arts uh, decoupage with uh, a collage brush. Got all that pressed down. Then I used some Stazon ink in a dark brown color and stamp just I wanted a little bit of like word I, I like to add script or or writing or typeset or things like that to my collage sometimes because not for what it says in fact this is in French so I can't even read it but <laughs> for, more for uh, just the the graphic nature of of writing interests to me and I think it looks cool in a in an abstract sort of a way so I use that stamp it's like some kind of French poetry in a script with that dark brown stays on, which is a permanent ink and stamped a little bit of that on there. Just it kind of, I, I made everything in rectangles and squares when I was tearing um, my bits with the exception of the T paper, which is I just kind of tore it. So I liked kind of connecting the squares with bits of, of that script writing. So here's my little sketch that I had made this morning and it was just a little pencil sketch of a cactus wren and I decided to fill it out by using an, a uh, brush pin. This is called a Pintel pocket brush. It's got black India ink in it. India ink is permanent when dry. So it's nice application uh, for mixed media if you're gonna put you know layers and things on. And I kind of filled out my sketch added some more of the patterning. Um, they, the cactus wren seems to have a lot of black dots right under its chin and across the top of its head. And then the bottom is kind of a, a creamy yellow color and there's a little bit of, you know, brown and different colors on it too. And it also seems to have this, this white stripe and black stripe across where its eye is. And then it has a pretty long beak because it likes to get on the cactus and grab bugs with its long beak. It can quickly peck at, you know, ants and things that are crawling on the cactuses. So that's, I think, believe that's how it feeds itself. So I got out some Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons, added some color in the places that I wanted, and then came back in with the water brush. This is an Arteza brand water brush. And blended out that crayon. I applied the crayon right directly to the paper. This paper is nothing special. It's just a piece of text paper uh, that you would use in a printer. It's light, lightweight enough to collage with, but is not fancy in any way. <laughs> it doesn't have any kind of fancy finish on it at all. The next thing I did was to get out a white Posca pen. This is an acrylic paint pen. So once again, once it's dry, it's permanent. Um, and I added some highlights here and there, and I'm just filling out the patterning on the bird. And his eyes looking a little bit predatory, but that's not surprising. He, he or she likes to eat the bugs, and that, so that would be <laughs> predatory behavior, right? <laughs> so um, I just think he looks a little bit uh, like he's going to peck you, sort of. But I like that about it. So I cut it out and uh, cut real close to the line so there wasn't any excess. And then I want to collage him onto this background. But before I do that, I need to have some sort of plant for it to stand on or rock or something, something for it to stand on because the bird can't just float. And I mostly see them standing on the prickly pears in my backyard. The, the prickly pears 
are very large in my yard. Like they're probably, I don't know, six or eight feet tall. They're very old and they've been there a long time. And so I figured that that, since that's what I saw the wren on this morning, I would go ahead and draw in some prickly pear pads for my composition here to get the wren something to stand on. So I'm again using that Pentel pocket brush, the one that dries permanent, and that's because it has India ink in it. This is a great little tool. I use it a lot. Um, you can blend it while it's still wet, or you can just use it like that and then give it a good dry uh, before you go over it. I maybe didn't dry it as well as I should have. <laughs> it's not quite dry, so I do get a little bit of smearing, but it doesn't really matter in this case. I decided to do some glazing to differentiate the background from the foreground and to add a little bit of uh, that green color. This is green gold, um, kind of an, I call that olive green, but it's called green gold, I believe. And I mixed it with glazing medium. So I got a little bit of acrylic paint out, then I got a little bit of glazing medium and I'm, gla I'm mixing them together to make a very translucent color. I want to be able to see through it. I don't want it to obscure what's in the background. Why would I add all that interesting color and pattern if I didn't want it to show? But I also want it to be, I want the, the cactus to be in the foreground and the background to be in the background. So I put a coat of that on. I am kind of patting and blending it and making sure there isn't any, any, uh, brush marks or anything using a baby wipe. So I just kind of go pat, 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 pat over it to make sure it's all smooth and nice. And I'm doing the same thing with the background. This color is um, Naples yellow. And then I have a little bit of titanium white as well. And I kind of blended the glazing medium, the Naples yellow and the white together to make a light creamy yellow color, yellowy orange color. Um, this particular brand of Naples Yellow is more orange than the other one that I have. So, you know, depending on what brand paint you get, you might get a different color. You never know. So then once that background is uh, all dry with the heat tool, I go ahead and glue down my wren. I put the matte medium on the back of the paper, the matte medium on the canvas, I pressed it down and kind of patted it down and smoothed it out with a baby wipe, but I did not put any over the top. Remember, I was using Neocolor 2 water-soluble crayons to color it, and so if I went and smoothed everything out with a layer over the top, I would have smeared my crayon. So I was careful not to do that. And then I went back in and did lighten up a few spots in the background just to make it stand out a little bit more, to make it be more punchy and in your face. Because um, that's how I wanted it. I added a little bit more green, kind of a more solid version of that glaze to the cactuses, just here and there, not all over. And then I got out a turquoise crayon. These are my water-soluble crayons again, the Neo Color 2 by Faber-Castell. My, my favorites, really, these are my favorites. Um, I added a little bit of that turquoise just here and there on the cactus and blended that out with my water brush. And then some very light yellow right at the tops where they might be getting the sun hitting them. And again, blending that out, making sure it's not puddling up using that same old dirty baby wipe. <laughs> and then I brought back in some of the color again with the, uh, the the crayons onto the bird because it had faded a little bit. You know, when you use a water-soluble media, once it's dry, it's not as intense as when you originally put it on and it was wet. So sometimes you need to put another layer. Uh, watercolorists definitely do that. Um, they put more than one layer of color over the top. They don't stop at one. So then... I wanted, I wanted still, I, I wanted to blend my collaged bird onto the canvas. And you know, often I do that by adding a shadow and blending it out around the edge of something that I glue on like that. I don't want it to look like a sticker, like I just stuck it on there. I want it to be integrated. So I added Stabilo All Pencil. This is a very water reactive 
pencil, it writes on pretty much anything, so you can write over all your layers with it. And then I blended that with the water brush to get a very uh, more of a painterly, blended out, bleedy look uh, all around the bird and then into the cactuses as well, a little bit just to get everything to look the same. Um, you know, blend it in. Last thing I did was again come back in with that uh, Pentel pocket brush and then also my white paint pen just to finish up. And I was done. I will take this outside and spray it with some UV protectant matte spray and give it three coats so that all that water soluble stuff is sealed in and it will be ready to hang. So that's it for me for my piece. Make sure that you go through and hop all through the other videos. You know, we're making free content for you and video hops are fun to go and see what other people did for the month using the idea of making things that you can hang on your wall. So hop, hop, hop with the hashtag let us start with art hop. There are also lots of other videos out there with that same hashtag from previous months and we'll be continuing to do this hop all the way through 2021. Thanks so much for watching. Here comes your close-ups. Bye-bye.